Hi everyone, this is Brittany Bond and welcome back to the podcast. Today I am going to continue speaking about relationships and specifically around the topic of monogamy and open relationships and then also just more stuff around sex and intimacy and how you can create more connection in your relationships and really enjoy your sex life better. Um, I have a couple of these podcasts, so if you haven't already listened to, make sure you jump on the other ones um, because this is kind of a continuation of that. (coughs) But of course, you can listen to it on its own. They're all, you know, little fun nuggets on their own. So I have a very interesting story around like my own personal life experience around monogamy. It's something that's like, it's been a theme of my life of exploration because I grew up in a religion. I was raised as one of Jehovah's Witnesses, which is a, uh, it's part of a Christian, the Christian religions, but it's very, um, I don't know, suppressive. And uh, a lot of people would consider it a cult. I would consider it a cult. Um, you're not allowed to speak to people. You're not like allowed to hang out with people who are not Jehovah's Witnesses. You're only allowed to marry within the religion. If you sleep with someone outside of uh, outside of marriage, it's like you get kicked out of the religion or you have like tons of shame and discipline that happens. It's like they monitor your every step. And your body, your emotions, your psyche is under constant um, watching by everyone. And also you're programmed to believe that, you know, any desires that you have, they need to fall in line with what the Bible says and what the religious leaders are saying. And even what you're thinking is monitored and programmed to make you feel. And all of this really ends up having a lot of shame and guilt that we like people who are raised because I was born into it my great grandparents were Jehovah's Witnesses and like this is everyone I knew my whole family so my reality growing up was this and here I am you know devil Scorpio fiery red hair all of my sensual being just popping out into the world and I'm like flirting with everyone just naturally like I didn't even really know what flirting was but I was just like you know and masturbating super young and and just like really interested in expressing my my sensuality not nece- not necessarily wanting to have sex because the way i was raised i wasn't really even taught what sex was like i learned about sex in school in like our science class i remember in like 7th grade <laughs> in a very weird way our teacher like trying to tell us like what penetration was and me just being like that terrible like I was like mortified because of my programming like wow a guy needs to stick something in me in order to have sex and like does that hurt and like why would that be sex so that's the reality tunnel that I was raised in and yet I had this and also like within the religion you are basically programmed and bred to uh, marry very young and you have to be a virgin until you get married And you only have sex until after you're married, obviously. And then you are with that person, not only in this physical timeline, they program you to believe that you're with this person even after you die, like in the afterlife. And I was like, whoa, that is a long time to be with one person. And then also they have you decide, you know, they really pressure you through programming to decide like really young and if you look at this there's a whole other thing I could go into like if you look at this from a cult perspective it's a really great way to keep people in the religion and in the cult because they have you get married to someone and then you're not only like if you want to leave you're not only having to walk away from the religion you're also having to walk away from you know your partner and their beliefs and like everything just kind of locks you in like deeper and deeper and I you know, I grew up with an abusive father who within the religion and they, you know, I wasn't exposed to outside help to get help with this. And I remember telling the religious leaders that my dad was abusing me and they were just like, well, it's in the Bible, you know, like they, your father has a permission to do whatever he wants because you're his child. 
So within my bubble of reality, the only out I really had was to get married. And so this is what I did. Like, cause I didn't know how to support myself on my own. I wasn't really exposed to the outside world. I went to public school, but I wasn't really given the tools to like figure out how the outside world worked outside of school. And so I didn't know how to support myself. And then, and they really program like women uh, to like, yeah, to get married and and to be like the submissive housewife. And yes, you work, but like you have to listen to what your husband says and you follow his lead. He always has the last say. So it's very like patriarchal. And so I moved out of my house when I was 18 and I ended up meeting someone very quickly who I started dating. It's the first person that I was really interested in. And honestly, I viewed him more as a friend than I did like someone I wanted to sleep with or a lover. And he asked me to marry him. And I remember like asking my, my, my mom, like, should I marry him? And she was like, you're an adult now you get it aside but just she remember her saying something like really think think very hard on this one and I and I was like okay but within my programming I really wanted to get out of my out of my I needed help like I couldn't I didn't really know how to support myself I had moved in with friends who were also within the religion but I was kind of drowning like I was just like trying to figure it out and I'm sure I could have figured it out, but it's just within the programming, you know, this is what you do. And so I ended up getting married to him and we had known each other from the moment we met to the moment we got married was six months and I was 18. I was still was 18 when I got married and I was a virgin. Um, and then I remember about six months into the marriage realizing, oh fuck, I don't want to be married to this person. Um, and also I wasn't, I was really happy that I was able to, you know, within my programming access my sexuality. So we had a very active sex life, but I wasn't attracted to this person as if they were my, like I wasn't in love with him. I loved him, but I wasn't in love with him. And I didn't even understand these terms or what this meant when I was, cause I was a child still. And this is the first person that I had really dated and like romantically been involved with. And suddenly we were like married and not only married for this lifetime, married all the way into, you know, the next life or the afterlife or whatever. <sighs> Just take a big deep breath. I want to take a deep breath on that one. So that was a lot. And I got really depressed. I was, cause I remember talking to my parents about it, talking to the religious leaders and like, imagine how he f must have felt because I never said anything to him directly, but I'm sure he could feel it that like, I didn't really want to be there. And I stayed married to him for six years. <clears throat> so imagine that, like knowing after six months, you don't want to be there. And then staying for six years in a relationship, in a dynamic that it, it felt like a prison and I had basically left the prison of my home with my dad and then went into, and I, I mean, my ex-husband wasn't abusive, but it was like, you sleep with someone you're not into, you have a life with someone, you're building a life with someone that you're not, you don't actually want to build a life with. And then there's this other part of me that was really attracted to other people and and I thought like, wow, I had so much guilt around this because I was like, I should be interested in my husband. And I remember thinking, wow, on the outside, we have this perfect life. Like I work at a law firm. I put myself through school at nighttime, which was really like not okay in our religion. But because I was married and my husband was okay with it, they just kind of let me do it. And to speak to that, the reason why they don't really like you having higher education is because they don't want you to think that you can survive in the outside world. Most of the people in the religion <clears throat> get jobs from each other. So it's very um, enmeshed, enmeshment. And if you try and leave that, um, it doesn't, it, it's hard to live in the outside world. So this is also why I view it as a cult. But anyway, so I got a job at a law firm. <clears throat> we had this beautiful house, you know, white picket fence. We adopted a dog. And we had a very beautiful life. And, you know, we went camping to national parks all the time. We were very outdoorsy. And I just felt like I was living a lie. I was like, this is not the life that, like, or like, this is the life I want, but not with this person. 
And I, I didn't know how to speak up for. I didn't, I wasn't given the tools. I was programmed that women need to be submissive and listen to their husband. And I could have opinions, but my husband had to have the final say. And not only that, like sleeping with someone outside of marriage, it was like, especially a woman doing this is like, she is a whore. Like she is the worst thing ever. And so I really just like shoved down a lot of these things. And I wasn't even able to figure out like if I was wanting to be monogamous, like even like the idea of monogamy was just so weird to me. And I felt like this alien that just popped into this timeline (laughs) in like a cult, in a religious cult. And I was just like, how did I get here? And I remember like actively consciously thinking this, like, why is this my life? Like, how did I get here? And I don't really want this to be my life anymore. So fast forward a couple of years, I got really depressed and uh, I got ended up getting on antidepressants because I couldn't get out of bed. And all of this was because I was living a life that was not in alignment with me. And then I, um, I ended up like making out with some, like another guy. And I think all of it was because I wanted to get out of the situation I was in. And also I was like 19, 20 years old. Like I skipped the whole part where you're like out having fun with your girlfriends and, you know, flirting and doing all those things. I was, I was like a housewife all of a sudden. So then I got this really amazing therapist and he helped me to realize that my, my, what my needs and my wants and my desires were as valuable as my husband's and as as valuable as any human and that I and gave me the tools to speak up for myself and so I ended up sitting my husband down and saying I don't want to be married to you anymore and I didn't I wasn't in love with someone else I wasn't sleeping I hadn't slept with anyone else I was just like I don't want to do this you know I don't I am living a lie right now this is not an alignment And he was not okay with that. He was like throwing things and screaming at me and was like, no, you're my wife. We're going to be together forever. And um, showed me a very different side of him and also his programming about how he thought that I just was, you know, I don't know. I feel like in the religion, I'm not saying that this is how my ex-husband felt, but this is how it felt receiving the way he reacted was like I was a piece of his property and I just had to go along with it. And like he got to decide, you know, what was... And I know he was very in love with me, but the way he treated me was like, I didn't get a choice in this and that I just needed to, you know, let go of some of my beliefs. Like I was somehow influenced by the world. And once I got rid of that, then I would be happily in love with him and live happily ever after. And I was like, no, you need to wake up. (laughs) Like this is, this is actually the real me. And within my religion, I was really viewed as this like bad person, like this harlot, you know, this whore, like everyone was assuming that I was sleeping with other people. And then eventually, like after we got divorced, like legally, I ended up, I did sleep with someone else like six months later or a year later. And within the religion, like they found out and they excommunicated me from the religion where they announced like from the platform, like Brittany Bond is no longer one of Jehovah's Witnesses. And then every single person in the religion like doesn't speak to you anymore. So that's that whole thing and then I went into this exploration where I was like really wanting to even like so I was 24 at this point and I was like I really want to explore my sexuality and I but I I was so programmed to be in monogamous relationships and I was a housewife for six years so like I'm really good at taking care of people and so I would start dating men and then like they would want to marry me. Like I have had like many, many proposals over in my timeline of men, like legitimately wanting to make me their wife. And I was like, I'm attracting the wrong person. I mean, so this is what I want to talk about in this podcast is my view on monogamy because after, through, through the years I realized, wow, I am not a monogamous person by nature. And this is the, this is the concept I want to bring to your attention is that as society and, you know, within our families, our, our societies, our religious, all of this is programming and the mainstream program that we're on right now around relationships is monogamy. I think monogamy is great. It is not, there's nothing wrong with monogamy. What I I have a problem with is people forcing other people to be monogamous when they choose they don't want to anymore or they choose that that's not for them and shaming them and making them feel guilty and all of these things where 
in reality, when we have a relationship with someone, like it's between me and this person, or if I have a relationship with maybe two people at once, it's between like whoever is involved. My relationship dynamic is between me and the people involved and no one else. And outside people should not be determining or outside religious programming, societal programming, government's programming should not be determining what happens between me and this dynamic of me and this person or these people. And that's what I really want to like bring to your attention that you can have a preference that you want to be monogamous. You can be like, yeah, this is my preference. This is who I am. This is what I want. And if that's who you are and that's in alignment with you, amazing. But what if it's not? Like, what if you are secretly, because you're scared to talk about it, and this is a lot of people, you're like, I love my partner so much. And also, I want to explore sexually with other people, or I want to have like some sort of energy dynamic with someone else where I'm sharing. It could be like an energetic connection where you're just like in an emotional relationship with someone, you're getting support with someone else or a romantic sensual relationship where you're not actually having penetrative sex with someone but you're cuddling and you're you know you're being intimate with them or it could be yes I want to have another sexual partner and I love my partner right now but I I want to have more I want to explore more and this is who I am that is all okay like that is great whatever is in alignment with you as long as you are being true to yourself as long as you are communicating clearly with the people around you, and as long as you are committed to protecting everyone's heart around you that you're involved with, and you really are showing up in that way and like considering everyone and really communicating and, and but at the end of the day, speaking your truth and being who you are, that's amazing. That's you being in alignment. And I want to let go of this societal programming because the younger generation today, you'll notice a lot of people are like, they don't want to get married. They don't even want to use labels. Like they don't, they're like, I don't even want to call them my boyfriend or girlfriend da, 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 because it comes with so much programming of what needs to happen next, which is we are going to be monogamous or we are going to be together. Or if we choose to break up, you know, this relationship, suddenly there's all of this pressure around us to keep it going. And I think all of that's bullshit. So I want to share another story about me <laughs> discovering that I'm non-monogamous. So the first person I actually realized that I was in love with, um, I met him. I have I had a travel company when I first like left the U.S. and was traveling and he was someone who came on one of, he was a customer of mine who came on one of my trips and we were in Italy. So he was a software developer and he worked online. And we find, found out that we actually have the exact same birthday, month, day, and year, which is just already like universally crazy as fuck. And it was just like, he was the first man. I also say uh, he was a man and he was the first person I was ever in love with. Like I actually was like, oh, this is what love was. Because when I was married and everyone was so happy around me and like happily married and like loving their husbands and wives. And I was just like, is something broken in me? Because I don't feel this depth of love that everyone is talking about. And I actually thought that something was like either biologically wrong with me or in my brain wrong with me, you know, because I knew that it was out there, but I hadn't felt it yet. And I was, and I, the saddest thing for me in my life was going through my life without feeling that depth of connection and that soul connection with someone and that like really, you know, that love where you're just like, you think about your life without them and your heart aches, you know, and I hadn't felt that until this person walked into my life, this man and when I actually, when I first saw him, like in a photo, because we were doing the applications for people to sign up and I saw him and I was like, Ooh, Oh, okay. This is going to be a thing. Cause up until that point, I had a rule where I wasn't sleeping with anyone that were coming on as clients. Even it wasn't a power, power dynamic for me. It was just more like I wanted to keep everything clean and I just wanted to like have work be work and then da da da. Um, 
And so I kind of stayed away from him the whole, because we do like these one month long things where you like rent a mansion in Italy and like stay with everyone. It's like a co-living, pop-up co-living space. And so I would just like run, I would be, he would come into a room and I would like leave the room and go and work in a different room. And, you know, we would do like these group exercises and I would always like make sure I was partnered with someone else or, and I got to the point where he was like, do you not, do you have a problem with me? Like, do you not like me? And I was thinking, no, you don't realize it's because I actually really like you. Um, so, you know, we got, we ended up getting together and traveling and it was a very beautiful romance and we ended up traveling the whole world together, like all through Asia into Europe. And then, um, he was from the UK. Um, but then we went to the U S and then together and then we went all the way back to Europe so we like went around the whole world together and I was like this is my person like I was so happy to be in love and I thought okay this is gonna quote unquote solve all of my problems around me thinking like is there something wrong with me am I not like can I just not am I someone who can't be monogamous you know because yeah so I just thought like that love would being in love with someone would solve my what I thought was a fault of mine that I also was even if I was in love with someone anyways I thought like being in love with someone would mean that I would never have desire for someone else like ever because in my mind at the time me loving someone meant that like if I love someone and I ended up being attracted to someone else it would take away from my relationship and it would mean that I wasn't as in love with my partner this was my programming and so and then and then John walks in to my co-working space so we were in Bali and I was uh managing a co-working space in Chenggu um which is this beautiful town on the beach in Bali and I was um, just doing my normal day, like popping around the co-working space, doing everything I do. And this friend, this brother of one of my friends there walks in, his name is John. And he was just very beautiful and just so my type in every way. And, but I still was like, I didn't, I didn't really, I wasn't like, Oh, I want to hang out with you. You know, like I, I really had closed down my energy, like I was not energetically available to other people. Like I was like, nope, I am in love. I will not look at other men. You know, da, da, da. I was really trying to stay in this monogamous bubble. And then him and I start talking and we sit down and he tells me he's a, a filmmaker for National Geographic and, and he really like cares about like doing sustainability projects and he's traveling around the world. And, and I was just like, oh, okay. I think I'm starting to fall for this person. And I was organizing a, um, a, it doesn't matter. I was organizing an event that he ended up volunteering to make a video on. And so we worked really closely for about a week, like in depth together. And I still was like, nope, we're friends. Da, da, da. Like I love my partner. This is the first person I've ever been in love with. And then I just couldn't stop thinking about this new guy. And I was like, there, I just felt so guilty. Like I couldn't even bring it up with my partner because I thought, oh, this means that, you know, I'm a bad person and he's going to leave me if he finds out that I am interested in this new guy and da, 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 da. And so we had already been planning, me and my current boyfriend had already been planning to leave, like we were flying to the U.S. in a week and me and the new guy were just like hanging out every day. We'd go surfing. We're working on this film project. You know, we were just talking about psychedelics. We were just talking about spiritual things, like totally connecting and vibing on ways that I had never with anyone before. And the last day before uh, we left, we ended up hanging out and we ended up kissing. And, um, of course more things could have happened, but I just couldn't in my programming, like do more than that. But already that was like, I felt like such a bad person. I was like, wow, <laughs> I don't believe in hell anymore. But if there is that reality, you know, I basically created hell within myself. Cause I was just like put, making myself feel so guilty for kissing him. And then I, and so me and my current boyfriend ended up going to San Francisco and, 
I ended up telling my current boyfriend like a uh, like a month later I told him like I kissed him and he was just like that was basically the beginning of the end of our relationship because he was like I feel like you're in love with him and I I can't believe you do this I don't trust you anymore and da 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 and I now looking back I realized it if I had gone to him like before I had physically done anything with John like the new guy I would have it would have gone a lot better I would have been like hey I love you. I'm in love with you, but I'm starting to have these feelings for this other person. But at the time I didn't have tools for communication like this. Like I was like, nope, I'm blocking all of this. I, I This means I'm a bad person if I like two people at once. But I was still so in love with my current boyfriend. And I was like, what? No, I don't want to break up with you. I just, I just have feelings for this other person. And he was like, no, you can't have feelings for both of us. You have to choose like one of us. And so I was like, I choose you. Like I'm, I'm with you. Like let's be together. And then, you know, we were together for about six more months. It still traveled more of the world together. But I think there kept being, because within me, I was like feeling so rebellious, I guess is the best way. Because I'm like, I am this independent person. I've spent so much of my life getting free from the programming of my father, my religion, my, you know, my current cult, everything. And I deserve to be free. Like I am a free woman. I know what it feels like to be so not free. Like if you've ever seen the show Handmaid's Tale, that's definitely the emotional reality that I grew up in. And suddenly I felt this same kind of constriction around me when it came to my relationship and my sexuality. It felt like who my current partner was deciding what I was able to do with my sexuality and I was like why is this why does it have to be I don't feel like it has to be like this I don't believe that this is the way it has to go like I don't believe that you know even though I'm in love with someone I don't believe that they get to choose if I want to sleep with someone else and or just like why does it have to be that I have to pick one or the other and so what ended up happening is like we broke up and then like a year later I ended up getting with that new guy because him and I was just talking as friends for like a whole year like remotely we were both traveling all over the world and we ended up meeting up and like traveling the world together making a whole YouTube series together and having a great time and then with that guy I I was like I actually said to him I was like I need you to know that I am non-monogamous like I want to eventually sleep with other people I don't know who those people are, but I just need to have this feeling that it's okay because you know what happened, like how we started our relationship and I don't want that to ever happen again. And I want I wanted to be okay for me to be like who I am in my sexuality. And he was just like, okay, we can try it, but I don't know if I'm okay with this. Like, does this mean that I'm not good enough for you as a man? And like, am I not meeting your needs? And I was like, no, this is not what it is. I just... I, I like to explore my sexuality and it doesn't have to, I don't want it to have to be where you have to fulfill all of my needs. Like there's some part of me that just likes to seek and like to have to be available and to be an independent person who's like open energetically to whatever love is coming in. It's not that you are not enough. It's that I need to feel free. I need to like I already have felt so unfree my, most of my life. And for many reasons, me and John ended up breaking up, but that was a big part of it was like, I just realized I really cannot be monogamous and just the the feeling that, you know, I have to lock down parts of myself because I am this super sensual sexual creature and I love that about myself. I'm not going to shame myself for this. And I have godparents, people who are, I consider like my adoptive parents in my life, and they're very supportive of me and who I am and my lifestyle. And I talk to them about this and I'm very open with them about it. And they were like, Brittany, you need to, before you get with whoever you're, you're going to date next, because we know you're always like attracting in these beautiful men, you need to ask them, what is your views on sexuality? Like, wh- who do you want? Like, what does you, what does a, a relationship look like for you? Do you want to be monogamous? Are you okay with being open? Like, do you want to be open? You know, da, 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 da. Because they're like, you need to make sure that you line up, 
like your sexual orientation with your partner before because you know men fall in love with you so quickly and you just need to make sure that whoever you are with they're not going to turn around and like make you out to be a bad person for you being who you are and I was like okay I will try that (laughs) so the next guy that I dated there's a lot of men in my life um he was actually a relationship coach for men and he was priding himself on being very open and like you know being in open relationships and non-monogamous and I was like great this I can this person is like preaching the t- the preach talking the talk whatever he's he's like literally living the life of um conscious non-monogamy like where you're actively like yes I want to be non-monogamous I also want to be in a relationship so we started dating we ended up getting a house together in Chiang Mai traveling together and I'm and then I really because he was very deep in like the spiritual community like in 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 Thailand and in a couple places around the world that are known for these conscious communities and up until this point I had been really mostly in the digital nomad community so I didn't really understand like a lot of the way people acted in non-monogamous relationships within quote-unquote conscious communities and I want to speak to this because what I found like this is me and my own experience is a lot of people who say that they want to be in polyamorous relationships which means like more than one person or open relationships they actually have a really hard time being able to share love openly and actually being in alignment it's like they hold back parts of themselves like the best way I can describe it is like the guy that I was dating, the relationship coach guy, I felt like he wanted to be in a relationship with himself. And then I was like the extra and I don't feel like he ever really let me in all the way. And I, and I do feel like we need to have our first relationships and our first um, person that we are holding ourselves accountable to and taking care of is our relationship with ourselves. So I really learned that from him. But I felt like there was something like broken in him where he like couldn't let my love in all the way. It's like there's a lot of and I maybe this is because of the programming that we have. Like there's a lot of people who are fighting the societal programming so much that like the best they can do is keep you at arm's length because they're worried that if they let your love in all the way, suddenly they'll want to be monogamous or suddenly you'll want to be monogamous. And so it's like, they kind of just keep you, you're like, you stay over there emotionally and I'll be over here emotionally. And we were like, you know, merging our lives together. We had joint bank accounts, you know, we were traveling, we worked on business stuff together, but I never really felt like we were like soul connected, like, you know, on a heart level. And that made me really sad because I was like, wow, this is someone who is preaching this and like really saying that he's living this authentic non-monogamous life, but like it doesn't feel good in my body. And now having lived on Copanyang, which is like this island in Thailand that is very well known for, you know, spiritual community and a lot of people being open and non-monogamous. And I've talked to a lot of friends and hosting the play parties and stuff. And I, I found that this to be true that a lot of people who are in open relationships like they actually have a a hard time allowing love in and like sharing love very openly like authentically and it's like I don't know if it's that they don't know how to love themselves that much or they again it's this programming that if they love someone too much it will suddenly mean the end of their freedom so it's like yeah, like this idea that they they want their freedom so badly that they're they'll like withhold their love, and I'm like, it doesn't have to be one or the other. It doesn't have to be this or that. It it can be both. Like I really was like, so I I basically went from one extreme to the other, where I was like, so chosen by my partner in a monogamous relationship and feeling that love, but then them withholding my f- like me feeling like my freedom was withheld because I wasn't able to be energetically open to other connections and it wasn't really okay in the dynamic to want to be non-monogamous and then going to the other extreme where I dated someone where like their career was based on them being very like you know relationship coach and non-monogamy is and 
and and then feeling like okay I have my freedom I can go do whatever I want but like I might as well just be single in a relation in a, an emotional standpoint because I don't feel chosen by this person like we we could have just been like lovers and you know both living our own lives or just friends who happen to live together and have sex but I didn't feel like romantically we were together and So this is where I came to the idea that it's okay to be chosen and free. Because for me, um, and I think this came to me like on a mushroom trip, this like chosen and free. Um, Because I I told you, like I really have been thinking about this and experientially trying to figure this out, like how to be in a relationship that feels good for me. And what I realized is I have so much love to give and I choose also to to have that love reflected back. Like the amount of love that I'm giving someone, I choose to uh, draw in and manifest a person into my life that is capable of and loves themselves enough that they can, you know, reflect that love back to me. And then at the same time, I, I choose to be in a relationship with someone where, you know, they know straight up that I am free, like, and they are free and you know, and we talk about it and we speak our truth to each other and and we be direct. Like it's super sexy when someone has clear communication and they're like, you know, did you find that person attractive? And like, yeah, actually I did, but da da da. And like, this is how I feel about it. And like be able to go in it on it as a team, knowing that we are each other's, you know, best friends and we are choosing to protect each other's hearts. And like whatever we are doing, we're doing it as a team. And like, if we want to sleep with someone else and like, you know, as a team, we have to be okay with it. And so this is where I, um, this is where I'm at with Faraday, my, my current part partner, I say current as just mean like, this is the person I'm dating now. Um, and I feel like he's the first person where I've been able to be, feeling this chosen and like able to we really give this love back and forth constantly throughout the day and we're so excited that each other exists in the world and we feel like wow this is this is my twin flame this is my soul like whatever you want to call it but like this is my other half in like the way he presents himself to the world who he is his values and and also like sexually compatible we're making love all the time but also in the sense of freedom like we're both like really we, we met at a, a play party he came to one of my play parties and we've hosted play parties together and you know we're both like really open to the other person being able to be in relationship with someone else like energetically sexually as long as like you know we do it in a way that feels safe for each other and this is this is the thing that I feel like a lot of open polyamorous conscious communities there's that they could work on is this feeling of, you know, really protecting each other's hearts and like choosing safety for each other. Because when you really love someone, you really want to make sure that like even when you're interested in someone else, they they know that you they're they're the chosen one. Like I love you you know and I want to be with you and everything's in flow and everything's changing but like I'm doing my best right now to protect your heart and like I want to make sure you're okay with me doing this over here and if you're not then like you are my number one and I'm here to like to protect your heart but like overall we both need to be okay with us like and also we're okay with changing that if at some point Faraday and I wanted to be monogamous amazing um, there's this really amazing book called Polysecure. I recommend everyone reading it if you're interested in these type of dynam of like dynamics around monogamy and non-monogamy. And it talks about how, you know, relationships are just so fluid. We don't need to be like, I am non-monogamous forever. And it's like, you know, if I get pregnant and I want to have a baby, like I probably am not going to be sleeping with other people. And I probably don't want Faraday to be sleeping with other people when we're like about to birth a child into the world. But like right now where we're at, of course it's fun and it's free and it's like why not invite more love in but with this you have to really love yourself first you have to be so secure in yourself and also secure that the universe always has your back and you know before Faraday and I got together 
I was really interested in him, but I always told myself this, like this man or something even more divinely suited for me, this or something better is coming to me. And I trust the universe. I trust my higher self to bring me someone who is perfect for me right now in my life and where I'm at in my growth. And like, and I really did. I like, I really believed that I was like, I am not attached to if it is fair day, but I, of course I would love to it to be, but I'm not attached and I trust the universe, I trust my higher self to have it work work out like the way it needs to in the end. And I'm so grateful for how it's worked out. And <laughs> yesterday on the podcast I made, I talked about um, having a threesome. And up until this point, I haven't had a like penetrative threesome with two men. And Faraday listened to it and he was like, I just want you to know that I'm okay with us having a threesome with another guy. As long as he's on our level and, you know, him and I can vibe and like everything's good but I just want you to know that I'm okay with that so like this is like the dynamic that we have where um and all I was saying in the podcast before was just that it hasn't happened yet and this is the thing is like when you find someone who's on your level and you're like really sharing this love then the so being chosen and free it doesn't mean that you're like, I'm not like on tender and like actively looking for other people. I am so full of the love and our life together. We're like traveling to the, today from Turkey to Germany. We're just always on one big epic adventure. But I'm also open that if someone synchronistically comes into my life or comes into his life that is in flow and is on our vibration or higher and is adding beautiful things into our world and sparking creativity and love and inspiration, I am open to that. I am openly receiving that. And that's what I mean by chosen and free. Because this is another thing is in this relationship with this, when I was dating this relationship coach guy, I felt like I'm, another reason why I didn't feel very chosen by this person was because he was actively on tender, like looking for other women and like flying to other countries to be with other women. And I was just like, there's something off here. And I didn't, I knew intuitively that it wasn't me. Um, I mean, maybe it was our dynamic. Maybe it just, we weren't right for each other, but I also felt like there was must be something, some hole emotionally that he's trying to fill by being with these other women. Because for me, like when I'm on my own, I'm not like actively trying to, you know, get on a date or do all these things. Like, of course I've used Tinder and dating apps. It's fun. Like, why not? But I'm not like using it as a, a way to fill an emotional hole or a physical hole, whatever you want to say. Um, and so that's something that I, I found like, when I talk about being chosen and free, it's not like, like we are good. Like Faraday and I are good. We are super happy. We are super fulfilled in our relationship. And if there's extra abundance coming in through other people, like sexually, emotionally, physically, whatever, amazing, great. Like why not welcome that? And why would I hold that back from myself and from him? So this is my view on like monogamy and this is why I want to bring this to your attention because it's it's been a long road for me and I've really had to like face myself and also face the people I'm with and be very direct and like open communication and really dive deep into myself and ask myself like is this because of my programming or is this because I want to just be myself and when I when I really got to the bottom of me being myself it is I'm a sensual sexual creature who loves flirting and loves like being out in the world and just vibing with other people. And also I love to be in a committed, beautiful partnership with someone who is on my level and I feel really chosen and loved and nourished. And I'm here to tell you, you can have it all. So you have to be able to face yourself and speak up for yourself and speak your truth within your partnership. So whew, that's a lot of um, that's a lot of stuff about non-monogamy. A couple more things I wanted to speak to, um, about, about like relationships is even like, there's so many types of relationship dynamics. And so even if you want to be, uh, physically, sexually in a monogamous relationship with your partner, you can still have uh, an emotional relationship with someone else that it's like, you know, like I want to give you options that the types of 
relationships I've had while in partnership have not always been like I'm having penetrative sex with this other guy. It's like sometimes in relationships, you can meet, you're like, you can, so you say you're in a partnership with your, you know, with your boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever. And then suddenly someone else walks into your life that you have this really great emotional relationship with. Like you guys just really vibe. You're always like, excuse me, you're always like inspiring each other. And you just, you have this really in-depth emotional connection that's super nourishing for you, for both of you. And I'm, I'm like, why are we locking this down that this can only come from our partner? Because imagine something I talk about a lot and throughout in my, my podcast is something called co-regulation. So when we are a child and we're a baby from zero, especially from zero to six months, we cannot regulate our own nervous system. So what that means is that when we cry and we're upset, we literally don't know how to calm down. We haven't been given the somatic like body experiencing tools on how to, how to, you know, go from being upset to being calm. So that's regulating your nervous nervous system. And so this is why parents, when their baby cries, they put them on their chest And the baby literally matches the heartbeat of the parent. So if the parent has a calm nervous system, the child suddenly is able to, you know, somatically from a body experiencing perspective, be able to calm down their nervous system. And this is something that especially when we have our our baseline foundational programming happening that's forming our our personality from zero to seven years old, this is like really important to have this co-regulation, like super, super important. But this doesn't stop when you're seven years old. Like, and this is the thing that I want to like really imprint on everyone is that even today we are, as humans, wired for connection. We are made to have this co-regulation with our friends, with our partners, with people who can support us and nourish us and have it go both ways, you know? And what makes me really sad is that as societies, we have segregated a lot of this co-regulation, this meeting our our emotional needs and helping each other regulate our nervous system to our partner, to our parents, to our families, and to our partner. And that is not made, we are not made to be like that. We're made to be in community and in, in tribes where like we're getting our needs met emotionally, physically, sexually by many different people. And you can have your views that you want to have your sexual needs met by just one person. That's okay. But why lock yourself down to have your emotional needs met and your physical like comfort? I call it caring touch. This is like a non-sexual touch. This is like getting hugs from each other and just holding each other's hands. Like when you hold someone's hand, you are through your hand regulating each other's nervous system because you can feel the heartbeat of the, your hand when you're... So like literally, if I'm upset and I hold someone's hand who is like has a calm nervous system, they are helping calm me down just like that baby that's being held on the chest of their parent. So why would we lock this down to just our partner when in reality those... I think it's actually like really unhealthy to have all of these needs met by just our partner. Like that's a lot of pressure to be putting on someone. When in reality, we can have these needs met by our community, by our support network. And so, you know, if you want to have these relationships dynamics outside of your partnership, it's so beautiful. This is one thing I want to bring into you and imprint in you is that it is very beautiful and it's very normal and it's okay to have some of these co-regulation needs met by other people besides your partner. And so this can be like, hey, I have a dynamic with this person. It can be a guy, a girl. It doesn't need to be a romantic relationship, but it's just allowing your programming to loosen on this and This is why I love, in a lot of ways, these conscious communities, because we do tantra immersions, we do cuddle parties, and this is all caring touch. This is non-sexual touch. And it's like, I have many men in my life where I've, I've never wanted to have a romantic relationship with them. But you know, when I'm upset, I can go and talk to them and like, they'll hold my hand or give me a hug or like sometimes we'll cuddle. And we talk and we're super intimate with each other in a way that we're being very open emotionally. And like, you know, holding each other and supporting each other. And it's, I think that that sometimes is like, 
even deeper than having a romantic relationship because you're like really there for each other. You're really there showing up and protecting each other's hearts. And this is something that I, I crave all the time. Like I love this. This is the part I love about community that we can have all these different types of relationships and it doesn't need to be, I want to claim you and own you and I, you're sleeping with her. And so I can't, you know, be with you. It's like, Oh, that's such bullshit. And if you think about it from the way that our society is programmed, it's actually a way to control us. So it's a rebellious thing. It's an amazing thing to allow yourself to receive love from many different angles and connection and co-regulation from all of these different people that have earned the right to your trust and are safe, healthy people in your life. So some ways that you can have intimacy and these co-regulation outside of a romantic relationship is you know, cuddling, holding hands, um, something that I really enjoy doing. And you can do these with your partner also, but I'm just saying that like, this is some stuff that really is good for co-regulation. Uh, I really love doing something where I put on a timer for like five to 10 minutes and I do eye contact. So this is like where you're just looking directly into someone else's eyes. And I invite you the first time you do it to not talk because a lot of times we talk to try and cover up our uncomfortableness with intimacy. So if you can allow yourself to be uncomfortable with the vulnerability of connection, then it will open your heart and you'll actually feel this connection that we're all craving. And so this is some play work for you and not homework, but play work is to get a friend, anyone that you feel comfortable with and say like, try and do like one, once a day for a week, eye contact with each other where you, you just sit across from each other, cross-legged, you can hold each other's hands if you want to, or no touching if you don't want to, and you put on a timer for five to 10 minutes, and you just say, I just wanna do some eye contact, some co-regulation, and I will tell you that your nervous system will be so calm, your heart will be so open, and you'll feel so connected. And these are beautiful things that we can do and still be in a monogamous relationship if you want to, and just feel this extra connection. Whew. So I have so much more to say, but I hope that this helps you just to open your brain and your minds to that there's many ways that we can be in partnership and relationships in ways that feel really safe in our bodies and that honor us and our needs and we feel loved and protected and nourished and respected and all the things. Um, so this is Brittany Bond and I am signing off for now and I hope you have an amazing day and you feel really juicy in your body. <laughs>